Over the last three years, I have slowly started to incorporate film into my digital only wedding photography workflow. It has been so much fun to add film to wedding days. It's changed the way that I'm shooting in general. And overall, I just feel so much more creatively invigorated because of it. So today I wanna to explain what digital and film cameras I'm using on a wedding day specifically, why I chose what I did for the sake of speed and convenience, and hopefully offer you some tips on how to shoot film on a wedding day and incorporate it in your business as well. So start Starting with all of the leather goods that I'm wearing right now to hold my cameras, uh, these are all made by our friend Todd who runs Clever Supply Co. Uh, this double harness right here hold two cameras at the same time. That's a pretty standard thing for a lot of wedding photographers, but if you don't use one already, I would highly recommend it because it makes your life so much easier on a wedding day. Uh, and my M6 right here, which I'll talk about more in a minute, uh, is on the recently released Joe and Clever Supply short strap, which is super exciting, really pumped for them. Two friends coming together and making something as amazing as this is really exciting. Uh, so this is gonna be my go-to strap for my M6 but I'll talk about that more in a second. As for the dual harness on my right side, I keep my Canon R5 with my go-to lens, the Canon RF 51.2. Uh, I've owned this lens for four and a half years now. I absolutely love it. You can check out this video up above and hear my review on it. It's my favorite lens really ever made. I could shoot an entire wedding day just on this if I really needed to. Um, and it's what stays on my camera most of the time. But when I don't have my 50 on my R5, I use the Canon RF 24 to 70 instead. I recently picked up the 24 to 70, mostly for video purposes actually, but I used it at a couple weddings recently and kind of love it, especially when I'm using it in conjunction with film. So I'm starting to experiment with that focal range a little bit more, but yeah. For the most part, it's still the 50 and then the 24 to 70 if I need something wider or just a slight bit tighter. The other digitally exclusive accessory that I keep on a wedding day is this Profoto A1 flash. I absolutely love this thing. I used to have a pair of Canon 600 EXRTs and they were very good in a lot of respects, but the recycle time on this is just absolutely insane. I'm able to fire off so many bursts of flash uh, with very little delay in between, uh, something that my Canons really weren't able to keep up with. This just, again, in the spirit of really having gear get out of your way and let you create, um, this is one of those things that really just lets you focus on doing your job and it keeps up with you every step of the way. So the fun little hack that I had with this is Profoto has more recent versions of this out right now. This is the, technically the first version that they ever made of this flash. And instead of spending like a thousand or $1,100 on the most recent one, which isn't much different from this one, I picked this up used in great condition for about $380 uh, and it's still just so much better than any other Canon or third-party flash that I've used before. So uh, if you are in the market for a new flash and want something that's really good, it's not inexpensive, but it will completely change the way that you're able to photograph dance floors. Now on my left side of my Clever Supply anchor harness, I have my Mamiya 645 AFD. I've made, I think, two or three videos about this camera now. I love it, it's amazing. You can go check out those videos if you wanna hear more in-depth thoughts about that. But this is, in my opinion, a really perfect wedding day camera because the autofocus is so good and it feels so similar to something like an R5. Very familiar with looking through a viewfinder in a traditional sense. It even handles like a lot of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras um, and kind of looks like it in a lot of ways too. But this is such an incredible camera to use for a wedding because of that autofocus, especially. Uh, it just feels like a camera that gets out of your way and lets you focus on creating. And that's really important, especially for a fast paced environment like a wedding day. If you don't want to get an AFD in particular or a Mamiya system, uh, Gene has a Pentax 645N that he loves and he uses at wedding days as well. Uh, it's a little more affordable and uh, it's a great entry into the world of medium format uh, while still providing you autofocus, which again, huge, huge plus for a wedding day. Moving on to the M6 that I talked about earlier. This is one of my favorite cameras that I own. It's a super special gift and it's got a great story behind it, uh, but this stays on my neck with Joe's short strap. 
And uh, for the most part, I just keep a 28 millimeter Elmerit Leica lens on this. Um, this is really nice for moments where I just wanna get an establishing shot. 28 is a really great wide focal length for those. And in a pinch, you could use it for a portrait too, which is really nice. If a guest comes up to you and wants a quick photo and this is all you've got on you, uh, it's a really good cover all focal length. So this primarily for me is something that I'm using for landscape, establishing shots, uh, and something a little wider. And my Mamiya is where I focus more on details because I generally keep a focal length of about 80 millimeters and above, uh, which is roughly a 50 millimeter equivalent on my Mamiya. And then the 28 complements that really nicely. So this right here is basically my core kit for a wedding day. Between all three of these cameras and the lenses that I use with them, I feel so good in covering everything that I need to cover with the speed and the accuracy that I need in order to do a good job documenting a wedding day. There are two other cameras that I bring though that I use more for personal enjoyment and just something to mess around with and experiment with. And those are a Yashica T4 Super D and a Pentax 6x7. I love the Yashica for its great autofocus and fantastic optics. It's a really easy way to just snap off a couple frames and know that they're going to come back looking amazing. The color rendering is excellent out of this camera and I've really been smitten with using it as just like an extra little pocketable camera on a wedding day. And on the opposite side of the size spectrum, the Pentax 6x7 is a very recent addition for me. I haven't used it at many weddings yet, but it is an absolute monster of a portrait camera. I love the 105 2.4, love the rendering that all, really all the lenses for the Pentax system give, and I'm just obsessed with the format of 6x7 now. I plan on making a future video dedicated just to the Pentax 6x7, but I will also keep you posted on Instagram with more images from that camera as I get more familiar with it. The last thing that I keep on my person on a wedding day is a sling bag. This is also from Clever Supply Co who makes the harness and the short strap. First and foremost, just love having kind of a very, very cohesive black leather look on a wedding day. Um, keeps everything feeling really professional, looking really nice. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest benefits of this bag. It's a sling bag that really feels a little more dressed up, which I love. In short, it's just a good sling bag to have to house all of my film, my extra lenses, cleaning cloths, multi-tools, snacks, everything of that nature. Um, love having this on a wedding day, it's perfect. And before I close out this video, the last accessory that is really important on a wedding day is a light meter. I've actually just been using a phone light meter app for the last couple of months called Light Me, all one word, Light Me. Uh, it's been fantastic, actually. Totally free app that has a range of options. I particularly like the fact that you can have a nice wide meter for a more evaluative meter of the scene, or you can actually zoom in and spot meter, which I found to be really accurate in a lot of the film that I've been shooting the last six months. So that's basically everything that I use for a hybrid film and digital day of wedding photography. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if this is something that you're looking to do or introduce in your business in 2024, and I'll happily answer any questions down there below the like button in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.